So the officer was bringing out some heavy things about apparel, how women are supposed to dress, how men are supposed to dress here. Well, we're going to get into this image right here. So I want to ask y'all something real quick. Hey, sir, church y'all from? Get the prisoner. Church y'all from? We're Israel united in Christ. Israel? Yes. So we teach our people who they are according to the Bible and what they must do for repentance. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Okay? I want to ask y'all something real quick. Somebody grab the, grab the prisoner. Uh, somebody got the address for the church? Okay. So, brothers right here. Who is this man right here? Who do they say that this, this isn't the churches? Okay, right. So give me John chapter 7, verse 38 real quick. Bring it up. So we're going to show you who this is in history and why this image is a problem in our communities. Right. Christianity has been responsible for the oppression of the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man. That's right. We never accepted that religion prior to now. That religion was forced upon us in slavery, and it's the reason why we're mentally captive today. Okay? Bring it Read that. This is the book of John, chapter 7, verse 38. Bring it out. He that believeth on me. So what color is this written in? Red. So the scripture says, he that believeth on me, which means Christ is writing this. Those who believe on me, read. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said. So we're going to show you what the scriptures say about Christ, read. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And that living water is wisdom. So you know, those who are teaching the image of Christ, according to the scriptures, out of his mouth is going to come the laws of God. That's why we're out here today showing y'all who y'all are according to the Bible and what you must do for repentance. A lot of people will talk about, yeah, we're the Israelites. I'm sure a lot of y'all have heard that today. But we're looking for people that are ready to start keeping God's commandments. Take the next step from just knowledge and actually start applying the knowledge in your life. Men. Marry women. No more homosexuality in our communities. Right. Women. Dress modestly according to the scriptures. Start keeping God's commandments. Father your children. All that is biblical. That's what we are here to teach. That's what Israel United in Christ is all about. So give me Revelations chapter 1 and verse 1. Bring it up. We're going to show you who this is according to the Bible and who that isn't. Okay? Read that. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So, brother, I see y'all walked up. What we're about to show you is what Christ looked like according to the Bible, okay? We're going to show you verbatim out the scriptures what Christ said he looked like. So read that one more time. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So God is saying, I'm going to reveal to my servants Christ. That's what the word revelation means. Guess verse 11 real quick. Verse 11, saying, I am Alpha. I am the first. And Omega. And Omega, I am the last. God, Christ is the first and the last. He is everything. Everything began with him and it will end with him in this country right here. Babylon, read. The first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. So, Christ is telling John the Revelator, what you see with your own two eyes, write in a book. Okay? Read verse 13. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like a, the Son of God, Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. So Christ had a body. He was wearing a garment down to his feet. Read. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the hair on Christ's head was white like wool. What kind of people have woolly hair? We do, like this brother right here with the glasses on. All y'all got woolly hair. When you see the images in the churches, Christ doesn't have woolly hair, does he? He got that white man hair, dog. He got that white man hair. It's long and stringy like a dog. Like the dog they are. He said his head and his hairs were white like wool. Woolly in texture, white in color. So why do we see this image in our churches? Does anybody know? Because they're trying to pull you and they're trying to put the fake Christ up there. They're trying, to, they're trying to get the white people up in there. You know what I'm saying? That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make us black people look like we ain't know. We ain't, you know what I'm saying? That's the point I want right there. 
They're trying to make us black people, which we're not black, we are the Israelites according to the Bible. But they're trying to confuse us and teach us white supremacy. What has that image done to us for us? What has that image done for us? It's oppressed us and it's taking every black man and every black brother and it's spread them abroad. Right, exactly. So that image has taught us to hate each other. I see you wearing it on your neck right there. You gotta take that thing off, my brother. We're gonna show you what Christ looks like. That is not Christ. Read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And Christ had red eyes, not blue eyes. His eyes were red. The whites of his eyes were red because Christ drank wine. Read. Bring it out. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet. And his feet, like what? And his feet, like unto fine brass. So the color of Christ's feet were brown. Brass is a derivative of brown, read. As if they burned in a furnace. So Christ was a dark man. So I want to show y'all something real quick. This man right here, his name is Caesar Borgier. He's the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. In 1492, his father commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to paint his son as the image of Christ. Give me Proverbs chapter 13, verse 31. Bring it on. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 31. I want to show y'all why this is a problem in our communities. Yes, brother. Okay, so this, this, when me and him talked about it, he told me to ask you. I said, so I smoke, you know what I'm saying? But I was asking him, why would God, if we're not supposed to smoke, my whole purpose of it is weed has a medicinal purpose to it. I don't, I don't do nothing without a purpose. And so why would he put something that has a medicinal purpose on it that can help you with things? You know what I'm saying? Just because I don't have a medical card or anything, it makes me a sinner. Okay, so we'll get into into marijuana. Yeah. Give me uh, anything that you smoke. We're not supposed to be smoking anything. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Okay? Because what's happening is that we smoke weed, we ingest all these things into our body, and what's happening is we're killing ourselves. I saw a brother right there who was smoking a cigarette. He couldn't even talk. His whole voice was gone. That stuff is killing us in our communities. And Esau has put this, the white man has put this in our communities to slowly kill us all. That's right. Notice whenever you go to a you go to Buckhead, you don't find liquor store or liquor stores on the corner of Buckhead, but you find them in all black communities. The white man puts these different devices among us so we can slowly kill ourselves off. Abortion clinics, cigarettes, alcohol, marijuana, Xanax. Half these people out here has whacked out their mind because they've been smoking for so long. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like weed is really killing anybody because I ain't never had no problems. Watch, let me show you. I'm going to show you something. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Bring it up. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? So Paul is telling them, don't you know that you're a temple of God? Read. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defileth the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So the scriptures say any man that defiles his temple, God is going to destroy. That's why there's cancer among our communities. You may not have cancer now, but I'm sure you know you have uncles and grandparents who smoked for a long time and they had cancer and they died of those things. God said any man that defiles his temple, him will he destroy. So we're not supposed to get, uh, smoke cigarettes. Give me that in Genesis chapter 2 where it talks about herb yielding seed. We're not supposed to smoke cigarettes. That's why you see our people here. You sell drugs, I'm, oh, I'm not going to ask y'all out that, but y'all know people that sell drugs, and you see how it affects our people, right? One in 29. You see how it affects our people. God gave us, God gave us uh, herbs so we can eat. It has medicinal purposes, right? Like how we drink coffee and it wakes us up, and you take certain plants and it helps you out with ailments. Right. Right. It's not every way you use it is a herb, and that's what people get up in their mindset. They think any way you use weed is a herb. Right. If you're using it for recreational purpose, it's not a herb, it's a drug. But the people who are using it for medicinal purpose who have actually have it. So read that real quick and then go to Romans 13. Read that. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. Bring it up. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree. In the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. So God gave us all these herbs for reason. They're here on the planet for a reason. Read on. To you it shall be for meat. So for us it shall be for meat, which means to eat. It doesn't mean to smoke and take into our bodies. Now give me that in Titus 2 about being sober-minded. So, so, so what you're saying is don't smoke it, put it in edibles. 
I'm, I'm legitimate. I'm, I, I'm really. So before you get that, give me Romans chapter 13 and verse 1, real quick. Because according to the laws of this land, we're not supposed to smoke weed. How are the laws here in Atlanta? Weed not legal. No, that's not legal, right? So the scriptures, we're going to show you in the scriptures what it says about that. Because it, in the scriptures it says God puts everything in place for a reason, right? There's reasons why marijuana is illegal across the United States and illegal here, right? So read that real quick. Romans chapter 13 verse 1. Bring it up. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. So God said let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. The government, that's what it's talking about, read. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So God put these laws in America for a reason. God put police around us for a reason. Those were curses that were put upon us because we couldn't police ourselves and That's teach each right. other the law. So God said, all right, therefore you're going to go serve your enemies. And they're going to be the ones that are going to police y'all. Read. Right. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth also the, of, excuse me, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. So if you resist the powers that are here, meaning the laws of the land, you resist God. God is saying you're not supposed to fight against what the white man tells you to do here. If the white man here tells you don't smoke weed, it's illegal, follow those laws. Right. Okay, but they, uh -huh. they make rules that, that's to us, that makes us, that makes us, you know what I'm saying, different from white folks. Let's keep reading this. Read on. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Right. So, if you resist those laws, God said you're going to be killed for that. You're going to receive damnation. Hell. So, even though it may be okay to eat, if it's illegal here, you're not supposed to do that. Now, get to Titus chapter 2. You're not supposed to do that here. All right, read. Bring it up. Titus chapter 2, verse 1. Bring it up. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That the aged men be sober. So we're supposed to be sober-minded. Marijuana puts you in a hazy state. You can't think properly when you smoke weed or you're high. The scripture says the aged men. You men are of age. You are aged men. You're, un you're able to understand. It said that the aged men are sober. Read. Grave. Temperate. Sound in faith. In charity. In patience. So say, it says grave. Meaning that you're serious. The so-called black man today is a joke. You saw this brother up here dancing, acting, acting like a fool. We're supposed to be great. We're supposed to be serious the way we deal with each other. Bring it out. Bring it out. Sober minded. Give me First Peter chapter 5 and 8. Bring All those out. things are attributes that we have to show in our community. Because there's a reason why marijuana is illegal. It makes us confused. Our people are whacked out. They sell weed to each other. They smoke a bad batch. They can't think properly. That's Read that. First right. Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So, he's saying, be sober, be sober-minded, be vigilant, clear thinking, because the devil walks about like a roaring lion. He's looking for souls that'll fall into all these different sins. We're supposed to be sober-minded as a people. You can't smoke weed and drink in excess and be sober minded. That's those right. are things that plague our community and the white man puts those things amongst us to let us destroy ourselves. When we, are, when we ingest those things, take these drugs, hold on brother, come back, I wanna show you something else real quick before you leave. When we ingest those things and take those things, what happens is we go into a decayed state. That's right. So let me ask you, what must y'all do for repentance? Because y'all know that y'all are the Israelites, correct? Y'all know that y'all are the Israelites, correct? All right, so what must you do for repentance? For the kingdom. Uh, it says repent and, uh, and ask for forgiveness. And, uh, you're missing something. So when you repent, repent is an action. You do something, right? How do you repent according to the scriptures? Action. Through action, which is what? Uh, you got to keep God's commandments. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going to show you some commandments. First, give me Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Now, I want you to hear. A lot of people tell you, oh, you can believe on Christ and you're saved. God says, it's just, there's a certain uh, step that you must take towards repentance, right? Repentance, people say repentance a lot, but they don't really know what they're talking about. Read that. Right, it says that too. Read that. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Bring it out. Behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do 
that I may have eternal life. So somebody came to Christ and said, good master, what must I do that I can have eternal life? What do I have to do so I can receive the kingdom of heaven? Read. And he said unto him, why calleth thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life. So he's saying, if you're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, if it's a stipulation, if you do this, this is what you must do. Read. Keep the commandments. So that is the key to entering into the kingdom of heaven. You understand that, brother? Yeah. yeah. So you have to keep the commandments. There's certain commandments that we have to keep. For example, you see how we all wear fringes on our garments, right? Yeah. That's a commandment according to the scriptures. If we're not just wearing it for fashion. Give me that. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. And I'm going to show you the significance behind why we wear fringes. Because this is spiritual right here. There's a reason why all these men have them. We have them all the time. Not just on these shirts. We wear them all the time. There's something spiritual behind it. Read. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them. Hold on, hold on. Come, come back. I want to show you something about the fringes real quick. Come. It says, speak unto the children of Israel. You guys are the children of Israel. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. He's saying, command them. Y'all listening? Listen up. This is important. This is about your salvation. He's saying, command them that they put fringes on the borders of their garments. These are fringes right here. Read. Throughout their generations. Throughout their generations. So you guys are still generating as a people. You have a father, right? You're a generation. Do you have children? You have a children. That's a generation. So God is saying throughout their generations, as long as we generate, we're supposed to have fringes on our clothing. Read. That's right. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So on top of that fringe, we're supposed to put a ribbon of blue. You see, everybody got a blue ribbon on a shirt. Read. And it shall be unto you for a friend, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So the reason why it's there is so we can remember all of God's commandments. This is a constant reminder that when I see my brother, I got to love my brother according to the scriptures. I got to bring out the commandments when I see sin. That's why we come out here. We got to correct each other. So this, this is a constant reminder of all God's commandments. Not smoking weed, being sober minded. That is a commandment of God. All, this is a constant reminder. So God is saying, put that on your clothing because we're, for, we're a forgetful people. We tend to forget everything God tells us to do. That's Read. Right. Smoking weed makes you constantly forget. You can't remember nothing when you smoke weed. Read on. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. And remember all the commandments. Read. And do them. And we're supposed to do them. Like you said, repentance. Repentance is an action. You can't say I repent, hop in a pool of water, come out and say I repent, and go back to doing the same thing. It requires change, which is why our people don't like to don't like to change. Give me first Ezra chapter 14, verse 34, real quick. It requires change. You gotta take a certain action of steps to repent. So y'all know y'all the Israelites today. What's the next step? What is it? And what is repentance? According to the scriptures, is keeping the commandments. Now they will see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels.
Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.